Congratulations on your purchase of Swami Express, Dr. Peter Diadamo's most advanced and individually tailored diet program available. In this DVD, you will learn how to take all of the required genotype measurements, providing the most accurate results as you begin your new diet. Before you begin your SWAMI program, you will need to make sure you have all of the required tools and information. The first thing you need to know is your blood type. The next is your secretor status. If you don't know your secretor status, you can still process your SWAMI diet, but it is highly recommended that you get tested soon. Then, you will need the proper tools to perform the genotype measurements, which come included in the genotype kit from North American Pharmacol. All of these kits, blood type, secretor status, and genotype, are found on diadamo.com under the tab Products and Services. Now that you have everything you need, you're ready to begin. The first step is to find your blood type. If you already know what your blood type is, you can skip forward to the next section. Upon opening the blood type kit, you will find a moisture-proof envelope containing a paper card. This is the Eldon card used to determine your blood type. Also included are four plastic Eldon sticks, a disinfectant wipe, a sterile lancet, a water dropper, and a handout containing step-by-step -step instructions with a key for reading the test results. To begin, you will need a pen and a glass of water. Open the envelope and remove the Eldon card. Then write your name on the card so that you can keep it for future reference. Next, use the plastic dropper to place one drop of water in the middle of each of the four circles. Open the disinfectant wipe to clean the finger you wish to draw blood from. It may also help to soak the finger in warm water to soften the skin. To prepare the lancet, twist the green tip and remove it from the cartridge. The lancet will not be visible from the outside. Push the cartridge firmly against the fingertip until the needle releases. It will automatically retract after breaking the surface of the skin. Then collect a drop of blood with the Eldon stick and transfer it to the first circle. Repeat this for each circle on the card, being careful not to reuse the sticks or mix the blood on the card. Once you have mixed the blood droplet with the water droplet, spread each droplet to completely fill its ring. Finally, rotate the card in a circular manner so that the chemicals completely mix with the blood, revealing the pattern of agglutination. Look for the pattern from your test on the key to determine which blood type you are and record the results on the Eldon card. When you create your user account with Swami Express, you will find nine input sections with spaces and drop-down tabs. Next to each section is a help tab for any questions you might have. The program can be saved as you enter information, should you wish to stop and continue later. And access to your profile is unlimited, meaning you can take as much time as you need. The Genotype Kit from North American Pharmacol contains all of the tools you'll need except for a flashlight and a sturdy tape measure. These items aren't critical, but may help when collecting some of the data. Also included in the kit is a fold-out easy typing guide, which might be useful as a secondary reference. When you arrive to Section 2, 
you'll see where to record your blood type and secretor status. Just below this is the field for prop taster status, which we'll now demonstrate. This may be done in one of two ways, as a randomized blind test or a simple tasting test. The way shown here is the blind test, though you may choose the simpler method if you like. First, have the subject close her eyes and without telling her which, choose either a prop or control strip. The prop strips are colored slightly yellow and the control strips are white. Ask her to taste the strip. Then note whether she tastes nothing, something bitter, or an intense bitter taste. Have your friend close her eyes again and hand her the other strip. Again, note the reaction to the taste of the strip and note the result. No reaction to the taster strip means she's a non-taster. A detectable bitter taste means she's a taster. And a strong bitter taste means she's a super taster. The following measurements will be shown for Section 9, Anthropometry, or Body Measurements. Waist and hip measurements are first, requiring only a flexible measuring tape. Begin with the waist by measuring at the narrowest point just above the belly button. Then measure the hips at the widest point and record the numbers in either inches or centimeters. The next measurement is used to determine the cephalic index, or how long versus wide the head is. Start with the width by measuring across the widest part of the head with the ends of the measuring tape about an inch above the ears. The length is determined in a similar way by placing the measuring tape on the forehead at the highest point, not at the base of the hairline running the tape all the way back to the base of the skull, called the occipital ridge. Again, record the numbers in either inches or centimeters. For the question about the Carabelli cusp, you might need a flashlight, though adequate lighting should be sufficient. This is to see whether or not she has an extra cusp or bump on the inside of the first molar. If the tooth looks like the rest of the teeth with no unusual surfaces, the Carabelli cusp is absent. If there is an extra bumper ledge on the inside of the molar, then the cusp is present. Incisor shoveling looks at the top two front teeth and is indicated by a concave curvature, like the scooping shape of a shovel. You'll need a friend to look inside your mouth to tell you whether the teeth are shoveled or not. The jaw angle, also known as the gonial angle, is the angle the jaw makes when the teeth are closed. This is measured by using the flexible protractor included in the genotyping kit. The method shown here is the way described in the Easy Typing Guide and requires a washable, non-permanent marker though you can skip this step if you wish. First, make a dot at the lower corner of the jawbone. Then make another dot at the bottom tip of the jaw, where it sticks out farthest. Place the third dot just in front of the earlobe at the top of the jawbone. Then use the protractor to connect the dots. Line up the dots with the inside of the protractor with the center dot in the middle of the hole. This will give you an easy, precise measurement. The number to write down is where the hash mark lines up with the inside edge of the protractor. If the angle is more than 130 degrees, this is considered a wide angle. An angle less than 120 degrees is a narrow angle, and anything in between is neutral. The following question asks about your leg space. That is, whether your upper leg is andric, gynec, or neutral. To determine your leg space, remove your shoes and stand with your ankles gently pressed together. Note whether there is open space in the area above the knees between the thighs. If the thighs touch all the way to the knees with no open space, this is considered gynec. 
If there is space between the thighs, this is considered andric. The next field asks for your somatotype or general body composition. Ectomorphs are lanky and lean. Mesomorphs are muscular. And endomorphs are rounded with a high waist to hip ratio. Many people are a combination of two somatotypes, being either mesoectomorphic or mesoendomorphic. You'll have to use your best judgment to determine which somatotype you fit. The trunk to leg ratio asks whether your upper body or your total leg length is longer. To calculate this ratio, first measure your standing height. Stand barefoot against a wall and have a friend mark the wall at the top of the head. Measure the distance between the mark and the floor and record the number. Next, measure your seated height. Sit in a hard chair with your back straight and feet on the floor. Have your friend mark the wall at the top of your head and measure the distance to the floor. Finally, measure the height of the chair from the top of the seat to the floor. Calculate the torso or trunk height by subtracting the chair height from the sitting height. Then, calculate the total leg length by subtracting the torso height from the standing height. From these measurements, you'll be able to select whether the trunk or leg is longer in Swami. The next measurement looks at just the legs to see whether the upper or lower leg is longer. For the upper leg length, Sit in the chair and have your friend locate the greater trochanter. This is the top part of the femur bone that protrudes outward. This may be a little difficult on some individuals, but can be felt with enough pressure. If there is still uncertainty, simply follow the crease of the pant leg toward the back. The location is approximately where the side of the leg meets the crease. Measure from the greater trochanter across the top of the leg, just before the kneecap, and record the number. Lower leg length is found by measuring from the bottom of the femur to the apex of the ankle bone. If you start just below the front of the kneecap and follow to the side of the leg, the bottom of the femur can be felt in the upper leg. Measure from here to the highest point of the ankle bone. Once you have both numbers, note whether the upper or lower leg is longer. Wrist tendon visibility is measured through simple observation. Place your hands palm up and without flexing, look for the tendons in the wrists. Mark whether they are invisible, slightly visible, or very outlined. Wrist encirclement is found by circling the thumb and middle finger around the opposite wrist. Do this for both wrists and record whether the thumb and middle finger don't touch, slightly touch, or overlap. The last group of Swami measurements deals with the fingers. Finger length can be found either from the protractor used previously or a small ruler with marks for millimeters. Whichever device you decide to use, be sure to measure from the first mark and not the physical end of the ruler. Start with the left hand, palm up, and measure the index finger from the crease at the base of the finger to the apex, or highest point, at the tip of the finger. You may want to perform this more than once to double check your accuracy. Repeat this for the left ring finger, then switch to the right hand and follow the same steps as before. The final procedure for Swami Express is fingerprinting. Included in the genotyping kit is a plastic pre-inked fingerprinting strip and a fingerprinting card. Place the fingerprinting strip and card on a counter or tabletop. 
It may be easier to secure the strip with tape to prevent unwanted movement. The method for obtaining the fingerprints may require a bit of practice, which is recommended before recording the actual prints. Begin with the thumb, or digit one, and place one side on the ink pad, then carefully roll it to the other side with medium pressure. Too much pressure will smudge and too little won't collect enough ink. Lift the thumb straight off the ink without rolling it back. The key is to cover the finger from the tip to the first crease and across the width of the nail. The more surface covered, the better. Following the same procedure, transfer the inked finger to the fingerprinting card. Repeat this for each finger on both hands. When you've obtained your fingerprints, you'll need to read the patterns so you can select which ones they are in Swami Express. There are three fingerprint patterns, the arch, which has two variations, the loop, and the whirl. The best way to detect a loop or whirl is to consider the entire pattern area looking for deltas. A delta is a triangle-shaped point in the middle of a divergence of the fingerprint ridges. If a pattern has one delta, it's a loop. Two deltas is a whirl. And no deltas signifies an arch. When recording loops, be sure to note the direction of the pattern. Since you have two bones in your forearm, the ulna and radius, a loop that faces the pinky finger, or whose lines flow away from the delta in the direction of the pinky, is an ulnar loop. In rare instances, a loop will face the opposite direction toward the thumb or radius of the forearm. This is known as a radial loop. Composite patterns are a little more difficult to discern as they don't follow any one of the three fingerprint types. The best way to decipher a composite is to look for deltas. A composite will have two deltas. The last thing you'll look for in your fingerprints are white lines. White lines appear as a result of low ridge height, producing a worn out look to the pattern. Ridge height correlates with intestinal health, so your age or physical activity actually has less to do with the readability of your fingerprints than your digestive condition. If you have white lines, don't worry, you can expect them to disappear as you adhere more closely to your Swami diet. When you've completely filled out the SWAMI intake form online and customized your preferences, you're ready to save and print your diet report. Once the report is generated, you can save the file as a PDF document to have printed and bound at a copy store or simply print on your home computer. For further information, see the SWAMI support tab in the main menu or feel free to join the online community message boards on diadamo.com. There you will find several topics, including a forum on Swami Express, where you can browse around or post your own questions. We hope you're excited on your journey into better health as you discover a new genetic potential. This has been a presentation by Diadamo Personalized Nutrition and North American Pharmacol Incorporated in association with Sunmore Productions, all rights reserved.